All right, got this thing put ball back together. It's back in place here, and I'm uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I got it done a couple weeks ago, and I've used this on a few projects, and uh, very happy. Um, kind of go a little bit of overview of what I did to it. So obviously I tore it all apart, uh, cleaned it up, painted it, so all the mechanical features here, you know, run smooth and true. Um, but most of the work I did was on this base here. This is a custom base that uh, the previous owner had built when I got it. And they had the bottom plate here, and it had some sort of attachment where you could slide in a jig uh, that was no longer with it. So I cut all that out, and I cut out the bottom plate, dropped it down a couple inches, and that allowed me to have access to these side rails here to mount in these sliding rails. Put these sliding rails in, these are just some basic ones from Home Depot, three and a quarter inch plywood, and now I have a sliding tray. And because this thing sits right next to my milling machine, I can be over here running the mill, and all my common use items, such as my milling cutters, or parallels. All my uh, common use stuff is in this toolbox here and you know easy for me to grab and then when I'm not using it I keep it closed up it's out of the way and since it's closed up I don't have to worry about a whole bunch of chips landing in it. Um, down lower I have the uh, scrap metal bin I also have my uh, portable vacuum cleaner back there and it just is a really good use of space. You know, I don't have anything really going to waste here, and, you know, I work in a two-car garage, so space is at a premium. Uh, the one part that I didn't paint that lived on here, this was a, uh, I'm thinking it's a bending die. I like to probably put pins in here and use this as a um, jig to bend things. I'm not quite sure it came with it, so I just left it. Maybe one day I'll try to figure out how to use it. Uh, as far as the Arbor Press itself, trying to date this thing and figure out when this thing was made, there's not a ton of information out there. Um, I've seen things saying, you know, that have the same style logo that were saying in 1930s, and then that goes all the way up into the 60s. So it's kind of hard for me to like give you an accurate estimate on this. So, you know, this, this could have been from the 30s. I believe Atlas started like in 1911, somewhere around there, really early 1900s. And, uh, so it's kind of anyone's guess because there's not a ton of documentation out there on these arbor presses uh, like you'd find on a bandsaw or a drill press. It's a lot easier to date those machines than this. Um, kept this, uh, valve, this valve handle here. This, this handle isn't original. This is an aftermarket one that somebody made and they made it out of an OS and Y valve. So that is off of a fire suppression system for you know, industrial complexes. But it works pretty darn well, and you know, it looks cool, but it's not original. Um, as far as usefulness, I'm using this more than I thought I would. When I put this in here and when I got this, I was like, you know, I'd, I'd use it for pressing on a couple bearings and bushings here, because uh, vintage tool restoration is my hobby, so I you know, justify that I'd use it occasionally. But I honestly do find myself reaching for this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, there's always those times when you need to clamp something so you go over the vise and you're just reefing on the vise and I'm finding now instead of damaging my vise by over torquing it, I'm coming over here and using this because I have 12 tons of pressure right at my fingertips and it's pretty easy to put a lot of pressure down real fast. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with this. Uh, glad I got painted up so it matches everything else in here and uh, yeah, it's a good use of space and I'm happy with it. So if you ever have the chance to, you know, get one of these, yes, they are big. Yes, they take up a lot of space in the garage. But if you do a lot of operations where you need that, uh, you know, fingertip control, to, like press on bearings, this is the way to go. I ran um, hydraulic presses before, and you can press stuff on with it, and you can also crush everything all the bits too, really fast. So. Having that fingertip control to know when you're starting to bind up, uh, just that feedback is, you know, huge, especially when you're working on one-off parts, say off a machine that they don't make parts for anymore, so you don't want to damage it. So, yeah, very happy with this.
Hopefully you guys got some uh, some type of video. Make sure to smash that subscribe button so next time I drag some more cool equipment in here in our store, you can uh, watch the process. Hopefully you folks have a great day and uh, thank you for watching.